On a cold February night, in the poorly lit pathways of London, two troublemakers spread fear among the homeless seeking comfort. Nestled in a makeshift shelter, Isabel encourages Joey to avoid resisting while hiding their forbidden items in her mouth. Their attempt to escape is stopped by the attackers who take the prohibited substance. As one of them starts to unzip Isabel's jacket, Joey fights back with a headbutt, initiating a frantic run for freedom. Even though Isabel manages to avoid capture, Joey undergoes a harsh attack before successfully getting away. Climbing a building, Joey enters through a window, finding himself in an upscale apartment without its occupants. Making use of the empty space, he spends the night. At the same time, one of the troublemakers finds Isabel and threatens with a knife. The next morning, Joey, transformed after a shower and a shaved head, leaves the apartment looking somewhat presentable. While leaving, Joey's phone rings, going to voicemail with a message revealing the apartment owner, Damon, is away in New York until October 1st. Joey, feeling relaxed, checks the mail and discovers a newly issued debit card with an enclosed pin. Taking advantage, he goes to an ATM, withdraws cash, and enjoys himself. While taking a nighttime stroll through London, Joey wrestles with memories from his time in Afghanistan. Luckily, he comes across a homeless shelter and meets sister Christina, who is serving soup. Sharing his quest to find someone named Isabel, Christina, recognizing Joey, asks about his clothing. Choosing not to disclose the origin of his attire, Joey generously gives Christina 500 pounds, telling her to treat herself. The next day, Christina discusses the matter with the mother superior at the convent, who suggests allocating the funds to one of their charitable projects. Christina requests permission to keep a part of the funds for something she has fervently prayed for. The head nun agrees, leading her to go to the theater in search of a ballet ticket. To her surprise, the ticket seller reveals that all tickets are sold out, except for a 500-pound box ticket for the farewell show on October 1st. Waking up from a disturbing dream, Joey struggles with illusions, seeing hummingbirds and a man hanging from the ceiling in his apartment. Seeking help, he goes to the soup kitchen and asks Christina for antibiotics. She suggests going to the emergency room, but Joey hesitates, having avoided the court-martial since leaving the special forces, where forgiveness is impossible. Touched by compassion, Christina asks about his needs. Joey reveals two broken ribs and an infection dangerously close to spreading to the bone. Getting antibiotics and painkillers, Christina mentions she has inquired about Isabel. Curious about her knowledge of Isabel and worried about his actions the night before, Joey gets a response from Christina, who discreetly skips the mention of the 500 pounds. She tells him that Isabel no longer comes to the soup kitchen. Back at the apartment, Joey gets rid of his alcohol and diligently takes his prescribed antibiotics. Finding Damon's black Mercedes keys, he goes around the city, putting up posters with Damon's contact details for Isabel to get in touch with him. A message from Isabel urges Joey not to look for her and assures him not to worry. She explains her choice to temporarily work for the troublemakers, aiming to gather enough money for a deposit on a residence up north. A well-dressed man with a noticeable scar above his eye meets with the thug who confronted Isabel with a knife. In the late hours, they go into a parcel delivery store where the man identifies three blondes, including Isabel. It's revealed that she works as a call girl in an underground brothel orchestrated by the thug. On a sunny March afternoon, Joey comes back to the apartment loaded with groceries. While making a health drink, a visitor buzzes at the door. Initially ignoring it, a woman threatens to involve the police, prompting Joey to open up. He makes up a story, claiming to be one of Damon's boyfriends, instructed to stay there for the summer to rebuild his life. Working at a Chinese kitchen, Joey cuts ties with Damon's debit card. He takes on the role of an unofficial bouncer, stepping in during disturbances at the Chinese restaurant while also engaging in exercise on the rooftop. Called by the head waiter one night, Joey is assigned to remove a rowdy group from the restaurant. While escorting them out, tensions rise, resulting in an attempted punch. Unbothered, Joey skillfully handles the situation, catching the attention of the restaurant owner, who asks about his identity. Taking on a new role, Mr. Choi hires Joey as a driver, entrusting him with various discreet tasks. Joey becomes crucial in establishing Mr. Choi's authority in the neighborhood, dealing with tasks like drug deliveries and collecting payments, all while amassing significant earnings. During a surprise pizza delivery at the soup kitchen, Christina realizes it's intentional when the delivery guy mentions that the order was paid for by Joey Jones. Consequently, Joey becomes a regular provider of takeout meals for the homeless. In July, Joey follows Dawn into a grocery store, grabbing her attention in a new encounter. Seething with anger, she confronts him about his fancy suit while she and their daughter struggle with a meager 25 pounds per week. Asking about his location, she finds out he has been in fights. An ensuing argument sees her throwing objects at him, stopping only when he steps in, 
offering a significant sum of money, claiming there's more where it came from. Finding piles of boxes and a dress outside the convent, Christina comes across a note inviting her. Meeting Joey, who's grilling on the street behind the Chinese restaurant, she questions the unusual activity and probes into his potential psychological issues, a question he doesn't deny. She then reveals news, showing a photo of a girl found in the river, disclosing that the police sought her help in identifying the victim. Reluctantly glancing at the photo, Joey immediately recognizes Isabel. In a rush of emotions, he burns the picture before sitting down to eat his steak. Wondering about Isabel's death, he asks if it was one of the wealthy clients who killed her, a suspicion confirmed by Christina, who reveals that the police think Isabel fell victim to a client. Overwhelmed with anger, Joey flips a table, unsettling Christina, accusing him of hypocrisy for mourning Isabel's fate while the autopsy revealed drugs in her system. Christina points out that Joey himself is involved in dealing. Once his anger subsides, Christina admits she spent the money he gave her but managed to return some by selling her belongings. In a dark alley, troublemakers cause chaos among the homeless, but Joey awaits them, confronting them about Isabel's death. Faced with a knife, Joey, armed with only a spoon, unnerves the larger troublemaker. In a display of strength, he intimidates them, demanding information about Isabel's killer. Giving details, the smaller troublemaker describes Isabel's supposed killer as a city guy in his 30s with a distinctive scar above his eye. Meeting Joey at a photo gallery, Christina appears in the dress he bought for her. Surprised, Joey is taken aback, prompting Christina to explain that it's her only dress. Nervously sipping champagne, she expresses concerns about fainting due to not having eaten. Revealing her reason for being there, she seeks information on Isabel's case, leading Joey to share the description of the culprit. Interrupted by an agent at the private showing, they quickly leave the gallery, running down the street. In a slightly tipsy state, Christina playfully flirts with Joey, asking about Damon's return. Joey reveals Damon is expected back on October 1st, coinciding with the ballet concert. Believing it to be fate, they share a kiss before Christina leaves. The next morning, Damon goes to work when his neighbor intercepts him in the parking lot, noticing a change in his demeanor. Curious about his sexual orientation, she asks if he's exclusively gay. Damon playfully responds that he's currently attracted to nuns, leaving her puzzled and amused. The police come to the soup kitchen, looking for Christina to get information about where Joey Jones is. Knowing that Joey is involved in Mr. Choi's activities and has connections to the homeless mission, they ask about his whereabouts. Later, Christina confides in Joey, admitting she had to lie to the police, saying that he hasn't changed. Joey, curious about the police's reaction to Isabel's killer description, finds out they ignored it, focusing on investigating him instead of solving the murder. On the way back to the convent, Christina asks about what happened when she got drunk. Surprised by her lack of memory, Joey reveals that she had asked him to kiss her, and he willingly did because he wanted to. Questioning his motives, Christina prompts Joey to explain. In response, he brushes off the question as foolish, suggesting she reflects on herself in the mirror. She shares a deeply personal story, revealing that she was sent to the convent instead of prison because of her young age. Emphasizing the confidentiality of the tale, she admits to never sharing it with anyone else. Christina reveals to Joey that she murdered her gymnastics instructor as a child because he assaulted her 17 times beginning when she was 10 years old. In a mutual act of trust, Joey talks about his sudden departure from the military, leaving his uniform behind and running away. When they get back to the convent, the mother superior asks Christina about her choice to apply for the mission in Sierra Leone. Expressing her enduring connection with Africa and her life plan, Christina seeks approval to speed up her departure due to the numerous distractions in London. She tells the Mother Superior that she's ready to leave any time after October 1st. On his boss's request, Joey meets Madame Choi. Asking about violent clients, Joey learns that Madame Choi keeps a blacklist, excluding such individuals. Joey provides the description of Isabel's killer, and Madame Choi confirms recognition, promising to reveal the identity in exchange for a favor. In a different setting, a man with a scar above his eye mistreats an unsuspecting young woman. Another resident in the house overhears the disturbance and investigates, noticing the man's coat hanging outside in the hallway. Checking his pockets, she finds an invitation to a rooftop cocktail party addressed to Max Joey organizes a truck filled with stowaway migrant workers for Madame Choi, delivering it to a warehouse. After getting paid at the warehouse, Joey, in the middle of counting the money, pushes the man for the information he was seeking, and the response is that it's on its way. Joey looks down at Max's invitation to the rooftop cocktail party. On the 1st of October, Christina goes to the park as Joey requested, as he asked her to take photos of him for his daughter. Expressing his wish for his daughter to have pictures of him appearing as a normal, good man for future memories, 
Joey expects a transformation. Concerned, Christina asks why he anticipates this change. Silent, Joey doesn't provide a response. They opt for coffee, and she asks Joey to share a few photos with her for her journey to Africa, revealing her departure the following day. She expresses her desire to conclude her tumultuous phase in London with him. Joey responds with a smile. Later on, they end up in Damon's apartment, sharing a close moment. As they finish, Damon returns but struggles to unlock the door from the outside. They quickly exit through the back, using the fire escape to get down to the street. Joey reveals a bag of money, suggesting they use it to start fresh. Christina interrupts him, insisting that if he wants to be a good man, he must genuinely become one. In a passionate kiss, she invites him to join her at the ballet at seven. Torn, Joey watches her walk away, grappling with conflicting emotions. At Dawn's place, Joey meets his daughter who doesn't recognize him. Leaving a bag of money on the doorstep, he tells her it's for her mother. Giving her an envelope of photos, he specifies it's for her. Expecting Joey outside the ballet, Christina is left waiting. Unbeknownst to her, Joey chooses to go to the rooftop cocktail party where he meets Max. Despite Max's questions, Joey remains silent surprising Max by throwing him off the rooftop in full view of the attendees. Exiting the ballet, Christina finds a drunk Joey on the roadside, holding a bottle. Waking up, Joey admits that he causes harm when he's sober and healthy. Tearfully, he opens up, and Christina provides comfort. The next morning, Christina reads a letter from Joey on her way to the airport. In the letter, he reveals sending Damon the stolen money and additional funds for rent. Joey mentions leaving money for the boys at the homeless mission to enjoy some pizza. He also shares that he provided information about human smugglers to the police. Expressing gratitude, he talks about being alive for just one summer and cherishing the time spent with her. Police visually confirm Joey walking down a street, taking swigs from a bottle. Cautioning others, they advise approaching him with extreme care. That's all from the video. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, consider subscribing. Don't forget to turn on notifications and give a thumbs up to support the channel.